Boys and girls, this is the Undisputed Era. Adam Cole, Kylo Riley, Roderick Strong, and you're listening to Going In Raw, baby. Hey guys, this is Charlotte, and you're watching Going In Raw. Going In Raw. That sounds terrible. What's up, it's your girl, Sasha Banks, legit Foster, and you are watching Going In Raw. You like that? Hey, Brendo, Steve here. And Lars. And welcome back to Going In Raw, the only pro wrestling podcast you need to be listening to right here at youtube.com forward slash Steve and Larson. And available wherever podcasts can be found. Be sure to hit that subscribe button and the notify bell next to it to make sure you always got your new Going In Raw notifications. We're also available on the Patreon at patreon.com forward slash Steve and Larson. We have a variety of reward tiers over there. I forget if we had any new patrons, so I'm going to look that up right now because at the $1 mark, you get a shout out right here on the show. Uh, one new patron, Alex Dula. Thank you so much for your support. Uh, this is the last AEW show we'll be doing with a WWE intro, Larson. It seems Correct. like it's, it's blasphemy at this point to do that. Uh, we, have one, we have one terrific intro from an AEW member. And then we have another mainly silent AEW roster member who uh, we have available a video of for us. So we're going to do that hopefully when uh, when TV uh, shows off. up in about a month and a, and a week or so. Yeah, roughly. So, October 4th. Yeah, less than that. Yeah, cool. Yeah. So uh, AEW All Out in a nutshell, Larson, what would you think? It's all right. Some really, has a couple of good, really good matches. Nothing bad. Nothing bad on the show. They have built up such a such an excitement uh, for their product Mm -hmm. that it it feels like anything less than what we got at like double or nothing. Yeah, the letdown. I I think we're gonna settle into what the norm is for them. Obviously, I think some of it some of it was uh, was match placement. I think the perception of the show might be. A lot better if that Pac hang uh, the Pac Omega match was later in the show. It was much later. Weird in the they show. put that on second. Then they followed up with the the, the really fun triple threat match, and yeah. there was a bit of a lull between there, where the matches weren't bad. Yeah, they just didn't have the oomph of the two matches that preceded it. Yeah, yeah, you know, and and uh, part of it is I think AEW really wants Dark Order to have a lot of heel heat. Mm-hmm. It's not there. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, I get why they put him against best friends because everybody loves Chuck and Trent. Mm-hmm. Uh, that being said, heel heat just isn't there for Dark Order right now. Yeah, that's that's going to be that's either going to be they're going to have to switch things up a little bit. Yeah, with that because you're right. Um, I thought the Rio Shida match was really good. Yeah, it was really good. Um, Sean Spears versus Cody, I thought was good. That was a solid match. Cody's really Cody's become a, pr- a pretty decent storyteller. Mm-hmm. Like he really plays to his strengths. Mm-hmm. Um. Lucha Brothers versus Young Bucks was pretty insane. It was an insane match, but I don't know, man. I it, I don't want to see these guys get hurt. It seemed like I feel a couple there were moments several times where it seemed like someone really could have gotten hurt. But man, I don't want to seem like a freaking nervous Nelly. I think it was a really fun match. It was fun. Um, and uh, and then yeah, the, then there was the main event, which was just sort of a physical. I mean, and Jericho's match yes. is going to be slow, and that's kind of it. I mean, look. They had to put the title on Jericho, which I kind of want to talk to you about. Do you think Kenny versus, given that Kenny lost, which is kind of shocking. Yeah, it was kind of surprising. Given that Kenny lost, and he probably would have lost against Moxley anyways. Mm -hmm. Having him, and I don't know, I mean, they they could have booked the feud different, the, the sequence of matches different perhaps, but having Kenny versus Jericho be for the title... In the main event of this, I think probably would have been a better move. Yeah. Hangman, I never got the sense that he's the star that they need that could carry the title. And if you have two guys where you really don't know, because with Kenny, he could easily carry, he could easily have been the first champion. Oh, yeah. Easily. Yeah. Like, he's the guy that WWE really wanted. And would have given him like almost an immediate main event slot, mm-hmm. probably. Mm-hmm. Um, I mean, he main evented Tokyo Dome several times. Yeah, a couple times. Yeah. Um, I just get to like in retrospect, thinking back on it now. After I was thinking about this while watching that match, Kenny is such an exciting wrestler. Mm-hmm. 
And given he has history with Jericho, I just think that probably would have been the way to go. Yeah. Because obviously, if Kenny's losing in on this pay per view, anyways, might as well have it be for the big yeah. Game. You could have had their rematch rather than having it double or nothing. Have it here, mm-hmm. yeah, and then have Mox come out afterwards, where Kenny's at his lowest point. And granted, yeah. I think they went away from Mox. Have Pac come out and attack him afterwards or something, you know? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, that was a fantastic match. Yeah, though. it was awesome. But it was kind of like there was a little bit of like, why is this so early in the card? Yeah, no. there was a little bit of that. And I thought, given the finish, maybe they put it early in the card because people were like, oh, what the heck. Mm-hmm. Why can he lose? Yeah, just space things out for yeah. stuff later on. Um, also announced during the show next pay per view full gear happening November 9th. Yeah, uh, so uh, just a little bit more than a month after their TV debut. Did we get confirmation when this is? Or I'm sorry, where this is? Uh, uh, chat in our live stream said Baltimore. I didn't notice it during the uh, advertisement that played, mm-hmm. but I'm guessing uh, that wasn't formulated out of thin air. Yeah. But, uh, we, yeah, we'll confirm that. Yeah. I mean, I think uh, this was a serviceable uh, thing. I mean, look, look, they don't have TV. I, I know. I understand they've got being the elite. They've got road to um, to build stuff. Yeah. But uh, I think it's going to be really interesting once TV starts. And they can really, really build some angles mm-hmm. um, and build some stories leading into their pay-per-views. Um, that should be really interesting. Yeah. But yeah, like you said, uh, this I, I would say this is more good than not for sure. So yeah, it's in Baltimore at the Royal Farms Arena. Oh, cool. Okay, right on. Neat, Baltimore. Um. So yeah, we'll just get into it. Yeah. So uh, buy-in kicked off with the uh, women's battle royal. Uh, winner of this uh, got one of the two spots uh, on the uh, first TV show on October fourth. Turin the first women's champion um, missed the very 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 beginning of it, but uh, amongst competitors in the first group, of course, uh, AEW they do their bell royals a little differently. Said it's double or nothing. Uh, wrestlers come out in groups of like four or five. Uh, so the first group must have had Britt Baker, Shaza McKenzie, Nyla Rose, and Penelope Ford. I don't know if there's anybody else. Those are the the people in the ring when we first turned it on. Uh, Britt Baker eliminated Shaza. Uh, Nyla Rose eliminated Penelope Ford. The next group comes out amongst that group. Tenille Dashwood. Yes. Which is cool. We had heard that she signed with Impact, but then uh, Britt Baker says, no, not really a deal per se. Like, she's doing stuff with Impact, but not like f- a full-time contract. There were uh, two names in this specifically that if they if they hook on to AEW full-time... Tennille Dashwood and uh, Mercedes Martinez. Mm -hmm. Who would make an appearance later, yeah. That greatly, hugely improves their women's division. Mm -hmm. That adds so much to Mm -hmm. it, if that's the case. I really would love to see that. Uh, Immediately, uh, Britt Baker, who's ringside but not eliminated, goes after B. Priestley, based on what happened, I guess, at uh, Fight for the Fallen. Mm -hmm. They start brawling around. Ringside. Oh, Eva Lee is in this group as well. Another name that, yeah. yeah, would be terrific for AEW. And Awesome Kong. Oh, um, yeah. All in that second group. So Kong eliminates Tennille and Eva Lee. Um, next group comes out. Amongst them is Nicole Savoy. That's awesome. She's yeah. terrific. A mainstay for a long time up here in NorCal. Another name that would be fantastic mm-hmm. in AEW. And at one point, uh, Kong, Irish whips her to the ropes, and uh, Nicole... Suicide Dive hits a bunch of women that were brawling ringside. Britt was there. B. Priestley was there. Uh, a few others. Um, and then Kong is eliminated by like half people in the ring. Next group. Oh, Brandy is in the second group as well. Uh, next group, uh, Mercedes Martinez. Or Sorry, she's the Joker. Mm-hmm. She was the final. Um, uh, at that point, Jazz was already in. Um, who else? Allie. Allie was there. Yeah. Um, Sadie Gibbs. Mm-hmm. Uh, but Mercedes Martinez, she was a joker, and uh, she had a, a heck of a showing. She hits a, a, a Saito suplex on Nyla Rose. After that, Nyla eliminates Allie. B. Priestley eliminates Sadie Gibbs. And then Britt Baker, I believe with an assist from B. Priestley, eliminates Mercedes uh, uh, Martinez. And then your final three are B. B. Priestley, Britt Baker, Nyla Rose. Uh, so uh, B. and Britt kind of team up to try to get Nyla out. Nyla's on the apron. And both B and Britt go after her. Nyla does like a cartwheel kick to both of them yeah, while she's on the apron to avoid elimination. 
Um, and then uh, Britt eventually eliminates B with a forearm. And then uh, B Priestley grabs on to Britt Baker's arm. Helps Nyla Rose eliminate Britt. Nyla wins the Battle Royal. She gets a t- shot at the title uh, against the winner of a match later on. Yes, correct. Next, Private Party versus and Helico and Helico on Helico on Helico and Jack Evans Hack Evans yeah this was a fun match mm-hmm. um, great to see Private Party getting a bit of a push this is a uh, first match I've seen with Private Party oh you, you, know, you didn't see the one I at, didn't see Fighter Fest that was a fun match at Triple Threat they were in I remember them really having fun. a match at Fight for the Fall I maybe mean, they didn't yeah maybe they didn't the match they had at Fighter Fest was really fun oh yeah it's Triple Threat one yeah. this was a lot of fun man I like this a lot of cool moves a lot mm-hmm. of I mean they seem there's still a little bit of like green there obviously yeah they're both really they're young. doing here's the thing they're doing very ambitious things in the ring mm-hmm. so there will be botches mm-hmm. um, but you know you, and they're they're young and they have a massive spotlight on them yep so yeah you give them some some leeway Yep. Um, they're a terrific team, though. This yeah. was so much fun. And, I mean, the pairing of uh, Angelico and Jack Evans, obviously, is a lot of fun as well. So there was just a lot of really, really Crazy fun Crazy athletic, here. high-flying yeah, stuff. Yeah, exactly. Towards the end, uh, Marcus Quinn hits a shooting star press. Got massive air on it, too. Um, but he's not the legal man Isaiah Cassidy is. So he goes down to the, the ringside area where uh, Cassidy is, brings him back in the ring to make the pin. By that point, Jack Evans come to enough to kick out. Um, and then there was like a top rope reverse Rana spot on Jack Evans by Marcus Quinn. Isaiah Cassidy hits a standard reverse Rana in the ring on Evans. Yeah, in sequence, yeah. Yeah, and that allowed uh, Cassidy to get the pin on Angelico after uh, Private Party hits their finish, which is a Hurricane Rana RKO cutter combo. They get the win. That was the first time I saw that. It's, it's great. It's a hell of a move, it's man. A, it's a, I mean, you take... You take the two most fun moves in wrestling and you put them together. Of course, it's going to be great. Why didn't anybody else think of that? A winner. Why didn't anybody else think of that first? A massive win. So then uh, Angelico and Jack Evans, they attack Private Party after the bell. So we might get more of this feud. I'm down for that, man. I'll I'll keep on taking these matches. Absolutely. Very creative teams. Next. So there is a vignette. Uh, There is a fella who was being... Who, who was confronted. He was out in the, uh, for a night out with his lady friend. In a parking structure, which yes. seemed like like the roof of a parking structure. Yes, it did seem that way. Um, and then they were walking, spot. I assume, to their car. And in front of them was a group of five street toughs. Yeah. I mean, they all they didn't look that tough. No. but They were obviously paid actors. Yeah. But they were presented to us as if they were supposed to be street toughs. Yeah. This is kind of like a scene out of what would be like a modern day. What's the Jets and the Sharks? Oh, uh, West Side Story. West Side Story, perhaps. Anyways, the the fellow with his lady disrobes his top, takes his shirt off, his button up shirt off. He's got like some scars on his back. But he's jacked. But he is Jack Daddy. He's super jacked. Yeah. Um, and so he proceeds to uh, thwart the attack of these street toughs yeah. and dispatches of them relatively easily. Yeah. I think culminating in like a choke slam. Yeah, he choke slam one guy in concrete in yeah. slow motion. Yeah, and then we just see Wardlow. Wardlow. That's a, that's not an easy name to say. I mean, six months from now, we're going to be like, oh my God, you see what Wardlow did? But right now, it's too new for us to really. Yeah. Wardlow. Did this guy go shoot this vignette himself? Looked like it. Although, I don't know how much money Wardlow has. Like, those cam- the camera is pretty decent. It was all right. Well, yeah, it wasn't like great. Do you think he got advance on his AEW contract salary? Say, so here he, we're we're a little booked right now, getting ready get ready for all out. You shoot like a little a little skit or something to introduce you. Like, here's an idea, is run with it. They can't have him do that out of his own budget. I thought you meant no. Did, I'm saying, did that, he pitch this to them? Did he send them this in the first place and say, hey, take a look at me? Maybe then they advanced him the budget. They're like, this is so good. We're gonna. Or they're like, okay, yeah, that's fine. We got other things to worry about over here. In any event, I think he directed it. Yeah. Uh, after that, backstage, MJF interview. Of course, he's going to uh, walk out with Cody uh, for his match against Sean Spears. He doesn't like Sean Spears yeah, at right. all. Yeah. Thinks he's trash. Mm-hmm. He saw his run in NXT. He was like, it's garbage. <laughs> What's he doing here? We do, we're not a dumping ground. No. That really that really should be his MO. Is We're not a dumping ground. Yeah, I know. Uh, that thus concluded... The buy-in main card kicked off with SCU versus what well, they call them Jurassic Express. Oh, is that what they're named? 
Is that what it was? I don't know. I don't Let me write it down. Luchasaurus. I really need to start watching this. Jungle stuff. Boy. Marco Stunt. Six-man tag team action. Of course, SCU did their customary promo advance of the match. Uh, Christopher Daniels randomly yelling out SCU. Uh, this is the worst town we've ever been in. It's so just paint by numbers at this point. Mm-hmm. It's just, I mean, I, I guess there's, there's an element maybe of like, I guess of, you know, this is just what, this is what the wrestling promo is now. It's, it's, it's weird. SCU almost seems like a nostalgia act at this point. <laughs> you're, you're a hundred percent. Yes. That's what it is. And they've been around for, for, for what, two years? That's what it is. Well, two of the guys have been around for like No, I mean, years. as SCU. I know what you mean, though. I yeah. No, I completely understand. They go through their thing like a nostalgic act, like a nostalgia act would. I know. You're completely right about that. That's yeah. hilarious. Yeah. Anyway, this was a fun match. It was a hell of a showing for Luchasaurus. He was doling out uh, black masses, all sorts of kicks to the standing moonsault at one point. Um, it was a great showcase for Luchasaurus. However, his team... Did not come out on top. Um, Marco Stunt is so much fun to watch. Yeah, he is. As is Jungle Boy. As is, I mean, everybody. In this, this is a fun match. Everybody in this match is great. Yeah. Um, there's a spot where uh, Frankie Kazarian hits a Hurricane Rana off the apron, I believe, on Luchasaurus. Sends him towards his teammates, and he had to, he speared him like the momentum was such that he was forced to spear Jungle yeah. Boy and Marco Stunt. Comedy uh, of errors. Yeah. And then Scorpio Sky follows with Tope on Luchasaurus. Finish saw uh, Kazarian pin Stunt. After he and Christopher Daniels hit their finish on uh, while uh, Kazarian was hitting both Stunt and Jungle Boy, Th- were there stakes for this? Mm-hmm. There wasn't no, no like stakes. you get a buy, you get to fight nothing. for a buy. Nothing. No, nothing. You qualify for a chance to fight for a buy. Nothing like that. No. <laughs> okay. No. All right. Fair enough. No. Uh, next pie match of the night. Uh, Kenny Omega taking on Pac or Pac as they were calling it's him. Pac. <laughs> care what they're saying. Uh, so there was some one-upsmanship. They'd run the rope. Someone would fall the mat, and rather than jump over, the other person would step on them, stuff like that. Uh, they did a pretty good job of, of bringing some intensity to a match that had no build. Because um, it's a dream match everybody wants to see, so it kind of oh, sells for itself. Sure. Yeah, dude, and here's the thing. It, it, it justified it. It did. Totally. It totally justified it. Totally we, we, know, we know what Pac is all about. We know what Pac's all about. We know yeah. what Kenny's all about. Yeah. We know all this stuff. Just get them in the ring and, and have them do, their them do that. Let them tell their stories. Yeah. Uh, so early on after that one-upsmanship, uh, there's some back and forth. Kenny goes for a Katara Crusher, and uh, Pac just like flips out of it. And then just smiles. And then smiles at him. Um, a little more back and forth. Uh, Kenny sends Pac to the floor, goes for a Pescado. Uh, Pac just kicks him. And then he tosses Kenny into the barricade, drops him face first on the apron, and just starts throwing him around, him around ringside a bunch. Mm-hmm. Uh, back in the ring, Kenny drop kicks Pac off the apron, falls with the tope, ankles crash into the guardrail. I always freak. I never yeah, saw, no, I saw a TK TKO Ryan. Ryan. Yeah. Oh boy. Um, we're back in the ring. Uh, Kenny does the you can't escape thing. What? I'm just thinking, I guess you I remember seeing TKO yeah, Ryan. Yeah, yeah, and his legs bend slow. around the guardrail. Yeah. yeah. No. Uh, uh. So back in the ring, Kenny does the you can't escape thing, misses the moonsault. Pac goes to the top, to the second rope, goes for a moonsault of his own. Kenny catches him. Uh, Pac reverses into a tornado DDT. Uh, eventually, uh, Kenny's ringside. Pac goes to the top, hits a moonsault. Um, after Kenny slides out of the ring because Pac was so Pac was on the top rope. He's going to go for a red arrow. Kenny gets out. Pac just like pivots 45 degrees, hit a moonsault. His ankles hit the guardrail. Uh, back in the ring, Pac hits a 450. Kenny kicks out. And this next bit was great. Kenny's going for a V-trigger. Pac grabs a ref, puts him in the way. Um, and then uh, Pac tries for a springboard drop kick. Uh, Kenny counters with a drop kick of his own. Uh, and then from that point on, it was Kenny hit, drop kick, go for one-winged angel. Mm-hmm. So he hits oh, – sorry, go for V-trigger. Hits a V-trigger, go for one, one-winged angel. I might have just said that. Um, he tried it once. Pac fights it off. Kenny transition to German suplex, the high angle one, gets a two. Uh, Pac eventually hits a snap German suplex, then a deadlift one. He gets a two. Uh, Kenny then gets the upper hand, hits a dragon suplex, falls with V-trigger, gets a two. Um, goes for another V-trigger. Pac catches it, goes up for goes for a step of Benzagiri. Kenny evades. Uh, he eventually hits a V-trigger, then another one. Um, goes for the one-winged angel. Pac escapes. 
uh, counters with brutalizer. What's it called in this finish now? Not the rings of stand, but like a, sand, a standing variety. Yeah, it's really cool. Yeah. yeah. And then Kenny passes out. Mm-hmm. Ref calls for the bell. Yeah. Pac wins and kind of a shocking end to the match. There was one, there was one moment where it was a little bit botched with uh, Herc and Ronda from Pac to Kenny. But, I mean, when the match is nor- otherwise this good, they so played it off okay. Not, not only was it good, man. They, like, it, I don't know. When, when, when a botch comes late in a match that's been so physical yeah. that they, they are obviously at their wit's end. They're yeah. obviously, like, gassed. Yeah. Um, and the commentary did actually a pretty good job of selling it. Yeah, I mean, it's like, dude, I don't, I, I, I would actually prefer s- things to get sloppy. Yeah, because I think it plays better in the story. It does. Cause I'm this, sure they're not happy about it. No, probably not. But this match was hard hitting. I think it's fine. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah it didn't bother me at all. Yeah, no, it totally makes sense. Because it seemed like with their with their strikes, they were really going after each other. Mm-hmm. It was pretty great. Um, but yeah, you, you know, where does this leave Kenny now? I think he's one and two. Ooh. And we noticed this time, were you about they to have, say? Yeah, they have records Ugh. on their lower thirds. Wins, win-loss records. So I think right now Kenny's one and two. Do you think that's yeah. going to be one of those things where like two years from now we're going to be like, hey, remember when they used to do win-loss yeah, records? Yeah, I think so. Like, I wonder how long that's actually going to last. Because I brought up a point during the stream. If Here's the thing. If, if somebody sticks with the company, if they stay with the company mm-hmm. for an extended amount of time, mm-hmm. and let's say they you know pay their dues, which oftentimes means lose a lot yeah uh and then they want to give this person a push if their record is like terrible if it's like eight and 38 yeah that's not going to look good to somebody who oh man they're on a hot streak now they're 12 and 38 yeah. you know it's yeah, not yeah, gonna yeah, yeah. so i don't know how long they're gonna do yeah that I don't know how long they're gonna do it's that gonna either. get kind of silly then how are these how are these win-loss records going to play into they can kayfabe and say they went on like an extended house show circuit. Yeah. I guess. Yeah, you know? what, oh, yeah, man, he yeah. rattled off 10 house show wins in a row. Well, they're not really going to have house shows. They're going to have like a handful of them, though. Kayfabe, they could say they do, though. I guess so. <laughs> they can, you know, that's the point of kayfabe, man. It's all fake, baby. But the the question I have is how are these, how are these win-loss records going to play into like, ra- are they going to have rankings? Are they going to have number one contenders that can be settled based on? I love that. I really like that idea. I really like the it idea. depends how they implement it. It's like, okay, well, cool. You know, now you've you've proven your case after you know months and months in the company. Let's, let's see how it shakes out. Mm-hmm. Um, but uh, I, it, it is. It's on the other hand, it's a little bit silly. Uh, it's it's pro wrestling. Yeah, we know. all know it's predetermined. Exactly. We know. Yeah, who's going to win the match, or they know who's going to win the match before they even start. So, should it really matter? Yeah. Uh, next, a really fun triple threat hardcore type match sponsored by Cracker Barrel. And they actually use the Cracker Barrel. It's a really good implementation of Cracker Barrel. This match was a blast. It I love fun. all three of these guys. I just can't get enough of, and I hope they just keep on going round and round. Yeah. Um, so it was Darby Allen versus Jimmy Havoc versus Joey Janela. Uh, immediately, bell rings. Jimmy Havoc leaves the ring. He goes under under it, grabs a staple gun, mm-hmm. starts shooting staples on himself. You got to get yourself geeked. Yeah. Uh, uh, shortly thereafter, uh, Darby Allen. With some help from Joey Janela, tapes Jimmy Havoc to a chair, and he goes. And he has a cup with him. He has some gaffer's tape and a cup. Mm-hmm. So first tape, then he goes and grabs the cup and starts shaking it. And it's like, well, there's it's, there's something, and it. it's not ice. What is yeah. it? He pours into his hands the thing of thumbtacks. Yeah. And so he shoves thumbtacks in Jimmy Havoc's mouth, tapes it shut, and then uh, uh, that's all done. Joey decides, all right, I'm done helping you out, Darby. Super he turns kick. on Darby. Yeah, super, super kick. kick. Yeah. Um, so there's some brawling back and forth between Darby and Joey Janela. And then Darby hits like a somersault sent on off the top rope onto Jimmy Havoc, who's still in the chair. Yeah. Oh, God. It's pretty crazy. Uh, then Joey Janela drops Darby Allen with an emerald flosion on the apron. Mm-hmm. Ow. Yeah. Oh, Darby yeah. Allen take, took some sick bumps. In this That's match. just his thing, man. Uh, and then uh, Jimmy Havoc gets his staple gun, and he gets this laminated uh, AEW. It's a piece of paper with AEW logo printed mm-hmm. on it. Yeah. Laminated. And so he starts giving Joey Janela paper cuts between his fingers. Yeah. He didn't want to. Uh, yeah, right the there. Mouth right here. Yeah. Uh, uses a staple gun on him. Um, and then Joey drops Jimmy with a brain buster onto a chair. And then uh, Darby Allen's getting up from the other move <laughs> on the outside. So he's on the apron. And Janela hits the sunset flip powerbomb over the top rope onto uh, Darby Allen through a table that's been propped up ringside. Yeah. It was pretty crazy. That was great. And then Janelle's back. He and Havoc are going at it some more. 
Uh, Janela goes for a moonsault. Jimmy Havoc gets out of the way. So Janela hits a moonsault onto nothing. Yeah. Like it jumps off the top rope to the floor, lands on his feet, and just falls on his butt. <laughs> yeah, pretty much. Pretty much. Jimmy goes up the ramp. Oh, he, he gets the Cracker Barrel that's there ringside with the, a tray of biscuits atop it. Mm-hmm. Looks delicious. Mm-hmm, it certainly does. Um, yeah, while he's doing that, Darby Allen goes over the ring, gets a skateboard on the other side of it. It's thumbtacks. Yes. And so he starts, he, uh, Jimmy punches it, and Darby jumps on Joey's back. Thumbtacks side down. Mm-hmm. Goes for the pin. Jimmy Havoc pulls him out of the ring. Uh, and then uh, Darby sets Jimmy up on the ring steps. Uh, goes and gets one of the cracker barrels. Puts it behind his back, goes up to the top, and does his coffin drop. Uh, but Jimmy gets out of the way. Yeah. So he just crashes through the cracker barrel onto the ring steps. How does that kid take the punishment, know, man. man? It's way too know, much. Man. I don't know. It looks terrific, but at some point, I mean, he's young. Yeah. He'll have to change things up. Yeah, a he lot will. Bit. Yeah. He will. He's going to change things up a lot. I wonder if I wonder if guys these days are sort of looking at Osprey as the blueprint, you know, it's like go crazy until you're around 26 or so. Yeah. Until you're mid twenties you know? and you got to dial it back. And you got to dial it back a bit, but make a big name for yourself doing crazy stuff. And then you can figure out the rest later. Yeah, I guess so. Yeah. Um, and so it's just up to Jimmy and Joey. Um, Jimmy hits a superplex on Joey, sending his foot through the cracker barrel mm-hmm. and then follows it with his, his rainmaker. Yeah. Through the cr- the Cracker Barrel. Yeah. Uh, pins Joey to get the win. Yes. Really fun match. It's good to see Jimmy Havoc picking up a W. What's going on there? Are you out of focus? Don't know. Like, I look like I'm in focus, but for some reason you look like you're out of focus. I don't know, man. Kind of too late to worry about now, huh? A little bit. Let's just proceed. Let's proceed next. Dark Order taking on Best Friends. Like I mentioned, uh, Dark Order doesn't have the heel heat that I think AEW really wants. I think a lot of it, you know, one thing the WWE does exceedingly well is, is presentation. Yeah. And Dark Order looks like cheesy cosplayers mm-hmm. where they have like cheesy, like purple uh, cloth. It's, it screams indie wrestler. It, it's, it's these little things that sort of make sense. You know, they're their lead guy. What's the main guy name? Uh, Stuart Grayson. Okay. And then Evil Uno. Okay. So Grayson. He needs to dirty up a little bit. He needs to grizzle up a little bit. Uh, and, like, the cloth needs to be, like, leather or yeah. pleather. Or Not fresh from super wet Joanne fabric. Yeah. Yeah. It needs to be something really weathered. Yeah, I agree. He needs, like, more stuff going like on. Like, go and roll around some dirt or something. It's like, okay, so he does. he's not doing the tattoo thing. So do, like, gauntlets. Or yeah. gloves, yeah, like other stuff, something because it's just it. You just come off as a bit cheesy, yeah. Um, and then when they make their ring entrance, turn down, the, turn off the house lights That's and the give them like a thing. red spotlight or yeah. something cool, yeah. Because they just look like some cheesy. They dudes. got the creepers with them. Mm-hmm. That's their minions or masked minions, mm-hmm. and they come down the ring with them. But the house lights are all up. Yeah, turn the house lights down. Yeah, make it creepy. Super creepy. It's not just. It's not. It doesn't really seem that creepy anymore. No, it doesn't. No, but uh, in any event, like the match was fine. Yeah, it was, it was a fine like match. A fun I still think there's match. just not. There's just the the crowd just didn't really seem into it after the two matches that preceded it. You know. Yeah. And that's kind of also an issue is is how they ordered the show. Mm-hmm. Uh. So towards the end, Chuck hits his awful waffle. He's not legal man though. Trent is. He's slow to make the cover. And then Evil Uno pins him off, pulls him off the pin. Sorry. Uh, and then the Creepers, they go after Chuck. Um, and then Dark Order wins with their finish, like the Gory Bomb type deal. Yeah. Um, Neckbreaker, I think is what it is. Yeah. Something like that. Anyways. So the Creepers, they pick up Trent to carry him up the ramp. House lights go down. House lights come back up. Who's standing in the ring, Steve? Orange, freshly squeezed Orange Cassidy. Yeah, so with hands in pockets, he hits a suicide dive on the Creepers and uh, uh, gets back in the ring. Kip up. Mm-hmm. Best friend joined him in there. Group hug. Yeah. Uh, so he's now they've said that he's he's sort of an official new best friend. They said he's training partners with Chuck. Yeah. So now the best friends are a, a trio. Faction, a trio. A trio. So I wonder if they're going to introduce trio. I mean, they seem to be... You got SCU, you got the Lucha guy, the Luchasaurus guys. Yeah. Uh, you've got 
these three now. Best friends. I mean, all you, you need have, is like. You have Dark Order with Extra Minion. With Extra Gimp Guy. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, Lucha Brothers, Laredo Kid. True. But they've already said they're doing tag team championships. I don't know if they do trios and tag team titles. But you never yeah, know. Yeah, I don't know. I mean, look, they've got. Now they've got uh, Miralax. Or yeah. Xlax. Uh, I don't know. I mean, I think that, like, they're signing a. a I'm not saying a bunch of people, but I don't know. They could. They yeah. could. I mean, think about it the other way. What is SCU best friends? Uh, well, those are, I guess the only two trios at this point, huh? They'd have to like get a couple more. Yeah. So I don't know. Like, are they going to be going for the tag titles? Also, they're a trio. Yeah, what I don't know. Be doing. I don't know. Mm-hmm. One, one member, I, mean, I guess with SCU, either one member can go uh, out and do single stuff. Should be Scorpio Sky. They should do that. I know, but uh, I don't know. The fact that they they created another, they created a three man faction, makes me think maybe they're going to have also a trios title. It could be, or maybe they just have Orange Cassidy join Best Friends to kind of equalize it the Creepers be. a bit. They, it could be. It could be for this for this specific purpose. Yeah. It could be. Uh, next uh, women's match winner. Of this gets uh, strong hearts. Yeah. And you've got, uh, yeah, you've got the Luchasaurus guys, Strong Hearts. Yeah, you, you might have. It's possible. You might have trios division. It's also. possible. Uh, another women's match. Uh, this one to run uh, Nyla Rose's opponent at the uh, first TV taping. Keep talking. I'm going to put us in focus. All right, very well. Uh, Hikaru Shida versus Riho. Um, early on, Shida works over Riho's back, and then uh, Riho eventually makes a comeback with the Hurricane Rana. There's some back and forth. Uh, Riho goes for a 619 on Sheeta. She catches it, puts her in a stretch muffler for a bit. Eventually, Riho reverses into a roll up. Um, we get this great deadlift superplex from Sheeta. She gets a two count. Uh, later on, Riho hits the Del Rio double stomp. I don't know why I call it that. Andrade does it way better. Uh, double stomp, Andrade style from Riho. Um, uh, Seems like Riho has the upper hand. Sheeta hits a backbreaker. Again, she's been working Riho's back over pretty good. Uh, only gets a two count. And then Riho eventually wins with his crazy... It started with like a crucifix crucifix pin thing, mm-hmm. but then turned to like a hip toss thing into yeah. a roll-up. It was crazy. It was pretty awesome. Yeah, no, it was really it was rad. Um, she picks up the win. So she'll be taking on Nyla Rose, October 4th, the first TV episode um, for the women's title. Nyla comes out on the ramp. Uh, to stare down Riho a bit, so uh, that should be that should be pretty solid. I kind of feel like this match, this and the Dark Order match, should have been flipped in placement because I do feel like the Dark Order thing kind of killed the crowd a little bit, and this match I think deserved a bit yes better of a placement. Yeah, it did because it like, was really good. If you take, I feel like if you have the SAU Luchasaurus Jungle Boy Marco Stunt match, that's a good opener, um, and then do. I almost feel like you do that, then you do, then do the triple threat, then do the women's match, then Dark Order best friends, then Pac versus Kenny. Mm-hmm. Yeah, kind of how I, th- I mean, you put it that way. Then you're building momentum a bit. But I mean, the thing is, there's no there, there's no matches like the Dark Order one was really the only match that like really didn't have much going to it. Mm-hmm. Um. All the other matches really have a lot of meat to them. Yeah. So, I don't know. Uh, anyways, uh, after that was Sean Spears versus... Oh, and then, I don't know if... Did you mention Nyla came out yeah. of the ramp? So yeah. Stared, okay. Yeah. So, after that, we had Sean Spears versus Cody. Um, and, again, uh, Cody's been really good at surrounding himself with just good story. Mm-hmm. And uh, this match, again, like the match played out. It was really nice with the story. Uh, and then, of course, you got some former horsemen involved as well. Yeah, but then I know Cody on his, his weight belt he wore down the ring said Captain on the back. Oh, yeah. Okay, we can talk about it. So y'all know I'm a massive nerd, and I love Star Trek. Why do you fact, do what do you do with Star Trek entrance? I even have a Star Trek podcast, and I didn't. I What is that? So uh, this, is like a, this is like a gripping, compelling story. Exactly. All eyes on Sean Spears. Can he... Sort of uh, 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 prove that he's more than just a good hand. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, and so Cody comes out. Well, here, let's do this first because Sean comes out and, and there's dramatic lining on the stage. He's really sitting at the cool top. entrance. Yeah, sitting on the top of the ramp with the, sitting in a chair. He's the chairman after all. Yeah. And then he takes his time. He's got a hood over his head. You can't see his face. Takes his time down in the ring. 
takes his hood off. He's got contacts on. Yeah. Which I don't know why, why that's exactly motivated, but it looks he looks cool. Yeah, he's got so like it's like white contacts. Yeah, yeah. yeah so white irises. White, yeah. yeah. So you're like, okay, that's cool. That it's it's they're setting him up as the as a character heading to the ring. We cut backstage and there's uh, Brandy dressed as Seven of Nine from Star Trek Voyager and the upcoming Picard series, and then you got DDP dressed as like Riker, but not for Next Generation, not from the TV show, from the movies. Those are the movie uh, outfits, right? They, well, it's the it's the Voyager. I mean, popularly, it's the Voyager TV series. They only wore that. They were on one of the Next Generation movies. The first Next Generation movie. Is when they introduced them. No, they introduced them in Deep Space Nine. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah. So they were introduced in Deep Space Nine, but because they introduced them there, they also wore them in Next Generation, the first movie. Yeah. And Voyager wore them throughout their entire gotcha. show. See? Yeah. I'm happy to have you here. For See, that. I'm here for something. You know something. the timeline. So, but, I, yeah, I didn't even think about it. You're absolutely right. They were like sort of an obscure Next Generation era uniform. Yeah, so you have DDP as Riker, essentially. So he's or got just command. Yeah, he's got the maroon shoulders. So. Yeah, right. And then uh, he's flanked by MJF, who's in jeans. At least DDP looked like he had black pants that matched the top. So he's in full uniform. Uh, MJF is like in jeans or something. And then he has a, a engineer's Correct. gear on. Yes. So the yellow, the mustard like yellow shoulders. Jordy or Data. Yeah. Yeah. And then uh, Cody makes his uh, entrance up through the ramp. And so he's got his ring gear on, and then he's got like the Star Trek shirt with the sleeves cut off. Yeah. And instead of having the communicators, it's like upside down his new uh, Nightmare Family logo. Yeah. It's pretty cheesy. I don't get how it fits into the story being told there between Sean Spears and Cody. No way they can justify in kayfabe MJF agreeing to do this shit. Like he put a scarf on over the, the top. Right. That's the only way that they, they made him still MJF. He's like, dude, what? You nerd? He should have hit Cody with a chair during that match just for that. I agree. You make me wear this Star Trek nerd stuff? It would make perfect stuff? sense for him to turn on Cody at that point. It totally would have. You want to go to Vegas for the big Star Trek convention? Get out of here with yeah. that. You I hate Star Wars. You want to go to the for that Star Trek uh, exhibit they used to have? You want to go on the Star Trek cruise? No. No. Good match. Engage. Heel turn. <laughs> so they come down to the ring, and Earl Hebner's the ref, and Earl says, well, Cody gets one person in his corner. So MJF's like, it's going to be me. Yeah. So DDP and Brandy, they go back to stage. MJF. And Pharaoh. Yes. Yes, Pharaoh comes down. Too. He wasn't dressed as a Starfleet. No. I don't know if they allowed dogs in Starfleet. Well, Data had a cat. Oh, so I mean, pets my... were allowed. No, I, I oh, mean, be an officer. Starfleet. Yeah, probably not. Unless they get like super smart in the future. They get some sort of augmentation so they can communicate with Bruh. <laughs> Bark. <laughs> Bark. Bark. And then a little box right here. Engage. Yeah. Good Intruder boy. alert. Don't pet me. Don't patronize captain. me, human. I'm your captain. Yeah. Uh, bell rings. Cody hits a suicide dive on Sean Spears immediately. He turns around, punches Tully Blanchard. Because Tully Blanchard's down there with Sean Spears. Um, so there's, they're brawling back and forth. Uh, eventually, Earl was like hapless this entire match, basically. Earl was classic Earl. He was pushing people around because Sean Spears at one point is like, hey, you, you're not me. And you're then, not me. And then Earl said, get out of get out of here. Get out of my face. Do you Ty, want some I mean, quality Sean. merchandise? It's out in my car. Yeah. Uh, so they're all brawling ringside. Sean Spears, uh, Tully's holding on to Cody. Sean Spears goes low while Earl's not paying attention. Uh, hits him right in the front area. Uh, has the upper hand for a while. Eventually, though, Cody gets the upper hand again. Hits like a Frankensteiner. That's a hurricane runner off the top rope. True. Uh, but tables turn. Sean, uh, he gets Cody's weight belt. <laughs> this is when he gets in Earl's face. And Excuse Earl me. starts giving him the business back. And so uh, Sean's like, all right. Drops the belt. Backs up. And Tully, real sly-like, gives Sean his belt. Yeah. And so Sean like starts Sears men's belt. Yeah. Using that belt on Cody. But Cody is seemingly unfazed. He hulks out. Yeah. Uh, and then he goes for a figure four on Sean. But Sean Spears reversed that thing immediately. Mm -hmm. As soon as Cody locked it in, not nah, reverse. Has it scouted. Reverse yeah, the pressure. Yeah, he's got Tully right there. You saw Ric Flair do that for years. A million times. Um, but Cody gets the ropes. Um, they're brawling outside. Uh, Sean Spears picks up uh, Cody, hits a, a DVD on the concrete. I mean, corrugated steel. 
uh, part of the ramp. Um, he goes back in the ring, expecting a countout victory. Cody finds his way back in. Uh, Sean pulls down his knee pad, goes for his finish, like the Ushiguroshi type move. Cody escapes, uh, hits crossroad, goes for the pin. Tully gets up on the apron, distracts Earl, and MJF gets on the apron as well. He starts talking trash to Tully. Tully gets into the ring. No, he doesn't. He walks around the. So he's on the apron. He acts like he's about to get in the ring. And maybe that wasn't his mark or something. So he yeah. Gets back yeah. out, walks around the ring post, and gets back gets in. Gets back in. Um, MJF rips off his Star Trek shirt. Yeah. Gets in the ring, folds his scarf, throws it at Tully, and then uh, eats a pump kick from Sean Spears. Mm -hmm. uh, the ringside, Tully and MJF, he starts, Tully starts laying him to MJF. Who comes down the ring? Double ramp? A. Arn Anderson. The Enforcer. Um, he comes down the ring. Hit Sean Spears with a spine buster, mm -hmm. and Tully just does this. Yeah, it's a beautiful spine buster too. I mean, Arn has the best, and he really does. So yeah, so Tully is is all upset. He's like, "What the heck? Best laid plans ruined now." Former tag team partner, former By, tag team champions together. Yeah, what happened to this? Yeah, now it's just a big old this. Whoa! Wow. So uh, Sean Spears is laid out for a bit, but eventually he goes ringside, gets a tear, a chair. Sorry. By the tell, he just, yeah, goes up the ramp. Yeah, goes up the ramp, leaves Sean Spears completely. Uh, gets a chair. You try and get through the ropes. Uh, Cody drops him with a flat liner. Cody picks up the chair, toss it to Sean Spears, hits him with a disaster kick, follows out with crossroads. Mm -hmm. He gets the win. Yes. Kind of surprising. I thought that if they want to establish Sean Spears as more than just another good hand, even if he had to cheat to win, he would have won this match. I agree. I was surprised that he lost this. However, um, I do it, it 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 was unexpected at the same time Sean Spears is here to stay mm -hmm. and this was a really fun match it was a good match and it was a big spotlight match mm -hmm. and I think that alone is good enough to say hey this guy is not just a WWE dumping ground guy yeah. so I I I am surprised I totally thought it I don't think he needed to win this I think he looks great. He's in great shape. Yeah. He's got the cool eyes going. He's got, hopefully, Tully still in his corner, but who knows at this point. Be seen. Um, they really have done a good job repackaging him and, in, and introducing him to AEW. Yeah. So um, I, thought it's been a, I thought it was a success. Win or lose, I thought it was a, a success. Yes. Yeah. Uh, next for the Triple A Tag Team Championships, Lucha Brothers versus Young Bucks in a ladder match. And oh, wow. My good, they did. They were doing some. There were some kind of scary moments here, man. There was one Nick Jackson falling through a table after like hitting his feet on the ropes. Yeah, he got his foot caught on the top rope. Yeah, yeah. there was a bunch of moments. I'll, yeah, there's I'll a bunch wait of till you get to them. All right, so uh, I'll I'll hit some of the the, the high spots. Uh, so early on, the Lucha Brothers, the spear, the Young Bucks off the apron through a couple of tables that just have to be set up ringside. <laughs> yeah, no one set them up except for the ring crew before the match started. Uh, and then more back and forth. Uh, there's this great bit where Matt Jackson hits a series of Northern Lights suplex, I believe, on Ray Phoenix, culminating in one into a ladder set up in the corner. Oh, one thing that people are probably going to ask about is what we thought about the Young Bucks' own masks. They had masks. Oh, yeah, they had mascaruses as well. For their entrances, and they did, they did the competing Cerro Mieta thing versus Cerro Huevos. Which of course is the is the, the the euphemism for balls. Yeah, you know, and they were pointing to their front area. Front area, yeah. yeah. Man, Seto yeah. manscaped huevos. Yes, yes. It was all good stuff. I it was great. It, it was fun. It. it was fun. Yeah. Uh, There's this great bit where Pentagon Junior and Matt Jackson were on a ladder, and Pentagon just hit a sling blade on Matt Jackson off the ladder. Off the ladder. That was a cool was looking great. sling blade. I'm not a huge great. fan of that move, but that was good. It was good. Uh, and then Phoenix hit a destroyer on, I think, Matt Jackson. Matt Jackson actually took a, he quite took a few a looks lot of, yeah. on this match. Uh, he hit a destroyer on him through a ladder. And then uh, probably the craziest single spot of the night, uh, Pentagon and Matt are hmm. on the ladder brawling. And then Pentagon hits a destroyer on Matt off the top of a ladder through a table in the ring. Yeah. It was insane. That was awesome. Insane. More back and forth. Eventually, uh, there's two ladders set up on opposite sides of the ring with tables underneath. Uh, Phoenix is on one with Matt Jackson below him. Nick is on the other with Pentagon below him. They're like talking trash to each other uh, across the ring. 
And then they both get the top of the ladders and do double splashes, uh, putting the respective partner through the table. Um, we're back in the ring. Uh, Nick puts Pentagon Jr. in the sharpshooter. Matt comes in and puts the, the bottom rung of the ladder on the back of Pentagon's head mm-hmm. and then gets down and like almost like in a, a bank statement or crossface type yeah. thing, starts cranking his head back. Um, uh, Ray Phoenix gets in the ring. He starts to climb the ladder. Uh, Nick lets go of the sharpshooter, meets him up there. Um, it looks like it knocks him off. It looks like uh, the Young Bucks are going to set for a Meltzer driver off the ladder. Pentagon, though, super kicks Matt Jackson. Um, and then Pentagon pushes the ladder over, and that's the spot where Nick get his, gets his foot caught in the top rope yeah. and lands through a couple of tables that were set up. Well, he lands through one of them, but the other one that he didn't land how he's supposed to, looks like his face hit it. Yeah. It looks like he busted open his hand because his yeah. hand was bleeding it afterwards. It was bleeding like immediately, yeah. Yeah. Um, so we have Matt and Pentagon Jr. at the top of the ladder brawling. Matt rips off Pentagon Jr.'s mask. Pentagon falls to the mat. Uh, Phoenix gets in the ring. Matt kicks him. And then Penta with one hand, the other one holding the his hand over his face, pushes over the ladder. Matt kind of takes a nasty spill. I don't know what you call it, the, the little folding thing. So you have the ladder that's set up like this, and there's a piece brace. of metal in between there like that keeps brace, it locked yeah. when it's open. Matt falls right on there, and it looked like it hurt. Uh, Pentagon goes, gets his mask back. Uh, uh, there's a ladder that's kind of set up between the apron and the barricade. He puts Matt on there. Um, uh, packed pile driver with a stomp off the top rope from Phoenix onto the ladder. Uh, Lucha Brothers get back in the ring, set up a ladder. They go up, they get the tag titles, retain their championships. Yeah, They're in there celebrating couple of mass dudes, one in a Bill Clinton mask, the other one in a uh, Kennedy mask. JFK mask. Come yeah. in, uh, push over the ladder. Uh, Nick Jackson's in there too. Uh, gets in there too. He eats a, a, a neck breaker powerbomb combo. Mm-hmm. Uh, these masked men take off their masks. Surprise, a- surprise. XLAX. XLAX. So, like, we're not entirely sure. Last I heard is that Impact owns the... Well, I heard, I read a few days ago that Impact owns the LAX name. Now, that was somewhat disputed in our, our, our chat, live stream mm-hmm. chat. Someone seemed to think that Conan might own that name. Yeah. Uh, regardless, it seems like Ortiz and Santana do not own that name. They did not say LAX once. They no. did refer to him as Ortiz and Santana. Though. Yes. So, um, so yeah, that's awesome. That's great. Yes. Yeah, so Another great tag team. Exactly. Which kind of furthers my theory. They're probably going to do trios also now that I think about it. Because that's just otherwise you got a lot of tag teams. Yeah, maybe you've got a lot of them. Well, I mean, they I mean the Young Bucks said they really want to have heavy emphasis on tag team wrestling. So and there you go. Who knows? Maybe we'll have intercontinental tag titles. There you go. Uh, mid card tag titles. Wasn't there? There was mid card tag titles back in the. I day. think in NWA they had all sorts of like U.S. tag titles North and stuff. North American stuff yeah. like that. Yeah. yeah. Fun match. Uh, things got pretty crazy at a few spots, but uh, nonetheless fun. I remember there was a list. I think WWE.com posted ages ago. It was like. Titles you've never heard of that only existed for oh, like a moment. Like the, like the Western States Heritage Champion and the Brass Knuckles Championship and stuff like that. I think like it that. was like stuff but that was in WWE. Oh, okay. Tag titles. I'm going to yeah. see if there's an Intercontinental tag, WWF tag titles. Uh, yeah. Okay. I thought I, I thought it was during 1991. Uh, Short lived. Let's see here. I like this weird stuff. The only champions... Were Pero, uh, Pero Aguayo and Gran Hamada. Final history. Yeah. Um, before we get to the main event, uh, got some uh, notes here, courtesy of Sean Ross Sapp. He's there covering the uh, oh, cool. post show scrums, media scrums. Uh, so, this is what he's been, uh, this is what he's reporting so far via Twitter. Uh, Tony Khan saying that All Out will be in Chicago on Labor Day weekend every year, cool. annual event. Cool. Uh, apparently, uh, Pac showed up. And tossed a bottle of water at Hangman Page, so we might eventually still get that match. Okay. And then finally, Sean Ross Sapp asked Tony Khan about uh, Kylie Ray's status. Um, apparently, she asked for her release and has been granted. Whoa. Wow. That's all courtesy of Sean Ross Sapp's Twitter. I don't know what that's all about. Yeah, I don't know. Hmm. Because, like, the story, like, didn't she go quiet on social media? Like, she deleted her social media something or something? like that. And even Meltzer, somebody asked Meltzer on Twitter just 
tonight, I think. Yeah, four hours ago. Do you have any knowledge on why Kylie Ray has been absent? Uh, and he just said, it's being kept very quiet. Hmm. So I don't know what that's all about. Interesting, interesting, interesting. Yeah. Oh, uh, WrestleZone has some notes on uh, what happened after the cameras went off. Apparently, Cody and Tony Khan were in the ring and gave a speech. And that's when Tony said that he wants All Out to be in Chicago every year. I'm sorry, wait, what's that again? Uh, after cameras went off, Cody and Tony Khan oh, okay. went to the ring and spoke to the crowd. Interesting, interesting, interesting. That's cool. I guess I'm not shocked that uh, they are uh, All Out is going to stay in Chicago every year. They kind of alluded to that, talking about how they uh, like the idea of like Star uh Cade used to be in Greensboro every year mm-hmm. for a while until they moved it. So, anyways, main event time. Hangman Adam Page taking on Chris Jericho, determined the very first All Elite Wrestling World Heavyweight Champion. Yeah. Uh, Page got his horse. He rode to the ring on a horse. Yeah, he rode to the ring on a horse. A horse is a horse, of course. Nay. So, <laughs> just watch that bit of the live stream. At that point, at that point, our reaction stream just turned into horse joke after horse joke. Yeah, pretty much. It well, was Bret Hart as horse. Bret Hart at horse as horse is probably like the best. Please give me give me a nay, nay. <laughs> See, still good, still good. <laughs> oh man! Oh wow! So there's some decent. There's some. This is a physical, hard-hitting bout. Like Jericho, you can't expect – he's not the technical wrestler he used to be. He's a brawler now. It's all brawling. It's all yeah. brawling, so there's a lot of stuff ringside. Um, there's this good bit where uh, Jericho is going for his, like, springboard drop kick. he does. Uh, Page ducked it, so Jericho's on the floor. Page goes for his, the shooting star press he does off the apron, and Jericho counters with a code breaker. Yeah, that was cool. That was cool. That was neat. And uh, Paige beat the 10 count and get back in the ring. And Riley is at the, he gets in the apron, and then Jericho knocks him off the apron uh, with the, into the barricade. And then uh, he takes Paige around to where uh, his family, Paige's family is sitting, mm-hmm. his parents and his wife. And his wife. And rips off the cloth of the barricade and sticks his arm in there and starts working over his arm. Oof, yeah, rough. Bending it through there. Uh, back in the ring, Jericho works in the arm more, eventually puts uh, Paige in the walls of Jericho. Uh, Paige powers out, hits Jericho with a discus elbow, and busts open Jericho above his left eye, the same place where Jericho busted open uh, Hangman. Uh, I guess it was probably Fighter Fest. Yeah. Oh, sorry, Fight for the Fallen, sorry. Storytelling. Yes. And so uh, you could see uh, the referee, Aubrey Edwards, hand Jericho something it looked like. Mm-hmm. Jericho rolls out of the ring. He emerges. Blood up on his eyebrow. Uh, so he's bleeding, bleeding a decent amount. Nothing like Dustin Rhodes was at double no, or nothing. No. Um, there's a spot where uh, Paige and Jericho are brawling up at the top rope. Uh, Paige gets the upper hand, hits that uh, swinging neck breaker off the top, only gets a two count though. Um, Jericho goes for that springboard drop kick again. This time he's a super kick from Paige, and Paige hits the buckshot lariat, goes for his finish. Jericho rolls through, goes for the wall. Uh, hits it. Page gets the ropes, though. Uh, we see another moonsault this time from Page. He hits it uh, off the top rope, onto the floor, back in the ring. Uh, he goes for buckshot Larry again. Jericho counters with a code breaker. Mm-hmm. Not enough to put Adam Page away. Yeah. Only a two count. Yeah. Um, Page goes for a standing shooting star press again. Jericho gets his knees up. Jericho goes for another code breaker, but Adam Page catches him. Jericho tries to roll him up. Page escapes. He goes for a finish again. Or he hits this finish. Dead eye. Jericho kicks out. Uh, uh, Page hits a buckshot lariat. Goes for another dead eye. Jericho escapes. And uh, Page goes for another discus forearm. Judas Instead, effects. he eats back elbow Judas effect. Yeah. Jericho takes a sweet time getting over there for the pin. Yeah, nonetheless, it took a while. Yeah. It was enough to defeat Adam Page, mm-hmm. Jericho is your first that all elite Judas wrestling champion. Is oh boy, both pretty strong. Yeah, it's a strong move. Uh, Who's got the chin to take one of those and kick out of it? That's the question. I know. 
I think a uh, uh, Kenny reborn once he gets through this Kenny crisis reborn, of yes. confidence. They're definitely doing some sort of crisis of confidence storyline with Kenny. Because like I mean I know this is this is like building up his Moxley match. I'm assuming he's going to lose to Mox also. But he's saying you know what I've I've I'm a true professional. You're over there in Japan wrestling 24 matches in 30 days or whatever it is. And meanwhile, I'm over here resting. I'm the best I've ever been. And he's losing a match. He would have lost to Mox also. Mm -hmm. So this seems to be some sort of crisis to come. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. So that's good stuff. Yeah. So, yeah, it was it was a good. I mean, look, man, they've said they set expectations so high um, that, uh, you know, we're going to figure out what a standard pay-per-view is like, what a yes. secondary pay-per-view yes. is like, et cetera, et cetera. It's a new I'd be, company. I'd be really uh, interested to see how this show played live. Sure, yeah. Um, to those it was a good crowd. I was kind of shocked yeah. that they were giving uh, Neville a 205 chant. Yeah, that was interesting. That was oddball kind of. Man, I love Pac. I would never hit him with that. Oh, hell no. Yeah. Pac is amazing. On top of that, I don't use the term 205 disparagingly. Man. Nor do I, I man. Do it's that. a great show. It's some great programming. It's a terrific show. Anyways. I uh, want to say thanks, everybody, for tuning in to the live reaction yes, thank stream. You very, thank you very, very, very much. Can't talk right now. Thanks for checking this show out. Neither can I. Anyways, we'll be back on Monday uh, live. Thank you so much. Till next time, we'll talk to you later. Bye. Be a part of Going In Raw today at patreon.com forward slash Stephen Larson. Starting at $1 a month, you can enjoy Going In Raw ad-free, gain access to the daily 30-minute Going In Raw post-show, exclusive merchandise, and so much more. Support Going In Raw today. Click the link in the description.